March was a crazy month, okay? I don't know what to tell you. And seeing how my net worth goes from a big, big negative. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Jannie and today we are going to be doing my March budget recap as well as discussing my April budget. Now, March was a crazy month, okay? There was a lot that went on in March. This included me going to Dallas for two weeks for work and they are going to reimburse probably most of my expenses, but that means that in the meantime, my expenses for the month of March were humongous, okay? I want to get that disclaimer out of the way. Luckily, uh, we did get our stimulus check on St. Patty's Day. So that means that if I need to, I can tap into that money that I put in savings to kind of like balance everything out. But as of now, I think I should be okay. But um, let's get into the financial talk. Now, let's start with March money moves and updates. So one of the things that I did during the month of March was that I moved an additional $600 from my savings account into my Roth IRA. And the reason I did that is because I still have a balance that I can contribute to my 2020 contributions for my Roth IRA. And as such, I want to try and get to the max. I'm not going to but I wanted to put a little bit more money in those contributions. So I put an extra $600 there. Like I said, we did get our stimulus check and that went completely into savings. I also got my $30 bonus from M1 Finance for signing up during the month of February and depositing $100. So that was cool. It's $30 of free money. So that offer is now over, but if you are interested, M1 Finance will give you $10 if you sign up using the link down below, and I also get $10. Actually, the $30 when you deposit 100 is back. So if that's something that you're interested, check out the link in the description box down below. Bella, our little baby girl, um, had her vet appointment to do her annual exam as well as her dental cleaning. So we have her on the Banfield wellness plan. So we do get like free visits. We only pay for like me medications and we do get a discount on that as well as her dental cleaning. We get a lot of discounts. So between her annual and her dental cleaning, she needed six extractions. So that was about $1,000 between both visits. So very expensive there. So those were the major money moves that we saw in the month of March. Now, like I mentioned, I did want to talk about a few offers that you can take advantage of if you are on your financial journey. So the first is you get a $50 bonus from Discover when you open a Discover credit card and you spend, I believe, $300 in the first three months. Now, when you get $50, I also get $50, and before, it used to be like cash back to your account, now they give you a statement credit. So, um, it's like a really good offer in the sense that out of the $300 that you spend to get the 50, you are really spending like 250 because they're going to gift you $50. Also, during the first year that you open your Discover card, they match 100% of the cash back that you accumulate with your card. And in addition to that, you get 1% in all purchases as well as 5% on their quarterly offers. So every three months, they have rotating offers that give you 5%. So sometimes it's wholesale clubs, other times it's grocery stores, restaurants, gas stations, pharmacies, things like that. And you get 5% whenever you purchase anything at any of those locations. So Discover is a really, really good alternative if you're looking for a credit card. Their customer service is amazing. I have one credit card, one checking account, and three savings accounts with them, I believe. I really trust them. They also have 
fraud protection so they keep a look eye on your credit score and notify you if there's any sketchy activity. So lots of good things from Discover. If you're interested, I will also leave my link down below. In addition to that, this month Rakuten, formerly Ebates, is having $30 offer. So you get $30 when you sign up and spend $30. And then I also get $30 for the referral. So it's a win-win situation. You essentially get to make a $30 purchase and then you get it all back. So think of it as a rebate. So if you're interested, I will also leave my Rakuten referral down below so that you can take advantage of this offer if you want. And then finally, the $30. You deposit $100 into your M1 Invest account. So you get $10 and I get $10 and then everybody's happy. Um, so far, I'm really happy with M1 Finance. I'm also taking advantage of their, they had an offer back in February that if you deposited, um, if you opened an M1 spend account, which is like their checking account, you get 1% APY as well as 1% cash back if you use a, a debit card. I'm using it to save for my student loans. So instead of paying them to nail net, I am paying them into putting that money into my M1 spend account and then that way it accumulates 1% APY. That is it for the money moves for this month. Before we get into the actual recap and the budget, I just want to remind you guys, if you have not done so already, remember to subscribe down below and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook to stay up to date with everything that I am doing. Now let's get into the budgets. So before we go into the numbers, I do want to say that something weird that you're going to notice is that the car payment is double what it normally is. And the reason for this is that somehow the February payment did not process into my account until March 1st. So then basically for the debit, then I have two debits going to BW Credit. So my closing balance, even though it was in process when I calculated it, it actually ended up from being higher than I thought. So my closing balance last month was $909.38 because that $422.93 had not processed yet. Then I also, you will see in the April budget that my credit card balances are a lot higher than they have been the past couple months and that is because we did go to Dallas. So we were basically eating out every day and I'm going to get most of that money back as a reimbursement sometime this month or next month. So for the month of March, like I said, my opening balance was $909.38. My work deposit was $3,443.38. Extra income, I counted my stimulus check, which was $1,400 for a total income of $4,843 and 38 cents that added with my opening balance I had a total of five thousand seven hundred and fifty two dollars and seventy six cents to budget or to spend during the month my total IRA deposits to this date are seven thousand six hundred dollars and my closing balance at the end of the month was $8,497.95 which is almost $900 increase to my IRA, which is awesome. Because of the deposits and then the withdrawal that I did to my Roth, my total balance for my down payment is at $8,253.27. My emergency fund has $3,101.18. My sinking funds have $185.41 and my M1 Invest account has $131.28. In terms of expenses, so my rent was $903.36 and this includes our $848 rent plus our utilities plus our valet trash service uh, that we have in our complex. I didn't spend any from my debit account on gas car was $845.86 like I mentioned because two payments went through. I put $700 away for my student loans. I paid $216.78 on my Discover card and that is a little bit higher than what I had budgeted but that is because I had to make um, 
some extra transactions and that balance went up but then I had a referral bonus from Discover come through so my balance went down $50. So I only went $5.27 over budget. Uh, nothing on my TJ Maxx card, my Apple card I had budgeted $85 and I spent $125.94 and that's like I said because we went to Dallas, I made some extra purchases along the way to get 5% 2% uh, back. That went went through before the payment was the statement was closing. So I have it to pay off the full balance on the account on that day, so that's why it was higher. I paid 100 to my PayPal account. I put $2,147 into my savings. I had originally budgeted 800, which is a difference of $1,347 because like I said, I put in the 1400, but I also took out 600. And then in terms of general miscellaneous spending, uh, I had a hundred, I had budgeted a hundred dollars and I spent a hundred and sixteen dollars and sixty seven cents. So the difference was sixteen dollars and sixty seven cents. So that means that my total budgeted expenses were three thousand five hundred and twenty four dollars and forty four cents and I actually spent because most of that went to savings five thousand three hundred and fifty five dollars and sixty one cents and then my closing balance was right on the dollar at three hundred and ninety seven dollars and fifteen cents that is it for the march moving on to april like i said since we had a lot more spending in march because our trip to dallas the budget is pretty tight so i had to play a lot with the numbers just to get everything to kind of be you know in sync and then i'm gonna put away less in savings because i'm pending that reimbursement and then once that money comes through i'll probably put that back into savings which would be the difference so for our rent it's going to be 913 dollars and 95 cents um for my car 422 and 93 cents i'm putting away 700 dollars for my student loans 400 on my discover because the balance right now is like 390 something um, and I think it was pending a few transactions, so I rounded it to 400 On the American Express, we pay all of Bella's expenses and we share them uh, in our Amex bill. So we put it that on a payment plan that we have uh, there that allows us to have no interest and pay over time. So uh, between that and all the other expenses, I'm putting $300 into the American Express card. 120 on my Apple card, 100 for PayPal, $400 into savings, which is half of what I normally do, and then $150 for miscellaneous spending. So it's a little bit tight, but I am very excited because, you know, I am very blessed to have had that opportunity to go to Dallas. I'm hoping I can put together a little vlog. It's not the best vlog in the world because I because of the rotation that I was doing and a lot of other things, I didn't vlog as much as I wanted to, but it is what it is. And I'm very excited about it anyway. The other thing that I wanted to do in this video is some financial wins. So basically, like I said, my Roth IRA growth is almost $900 above what I have contributed. So that is amazing. I did create a new financial tracker in Excel. So the cash flow that I was using, I basically created a few extra sheets to track different things, including like my annual expenses and my net worth and all that. So I am super excited to start tracking that and seeing how my net worth goes from a big, big negative slowly into a more positive number. So if you want me to do a video about how I'm tracking my expenses, please give this video a big thumbs up and let me know in the comments down below that you want to see how I track my, fin my finances. If you want to know why my net worth is so high, then you can head over to my previous video, which was opening up about my student debt. And I go into all the numbers that are very big and scary. So if you are curious about that, so like I was saying, if you want to find out all the 
nitty gritty details about my student loans and why my net worth is so negative, then head over to my previous video. I will leave a card up here. So I'm excited to see how my net worth changes over time. One of the other things is I am starting my job search, which means that in the coming months, sometime before the end of the year, I may get a sign on bonus or a resident stipend for signing on for my job for next year, which like I mentioned in my 2021 goals is like terrifying but very exciting at the same time so I don't know what to tell you but I will definitely keep you updated on the process and like I said I will probably be doing a job search series just because there's really not a lot of information out there for residents who are graduating about how the process works so I kind of want to share that experience with you guys and then one other update which is not really a win financially speaking but it is a win for my health is that I am planning to have surgery sometime in the summer or fall and I got estimate of the cost of that surgery and it's essentially going to be around eleven thousand dollars <laughs> that is terrifying that is horrifying, but like I mentioned in my endometriosis video, there are days that I haven't been doing very well because of that and I think it's time to have surgery because my quality of life will be greatly, greatly improved by it. So somehow I have to figure out those numbers in terms of my cash flow and my savings coming up with $11,000 is not easy and even though I have the cash for it I don't want to lose all my cash because some of that we had put away for our down payment but is delaying a house really it's worth me being okay you know me feeling good so a lot of things coming up in the next couple of months if you guys have any questions any suggestions please leave them down below i have seen a lot of new faces over here i'm excited to have all of you join our little family and yeah thank you so much for watching leave me a comment down below with what types of videos you want to see I think I'm going to be focusing a little bit more on finances than lifestyle or other topics. So stay tuned for more financial videos. Subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already. And follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, everything social media in general to stay up to date with what I am doing. I love you guys and see you in the next one. Bye. Walking downtown and I'm okay